Before we get to the update on the Orange Crush, I wanted to give an update on what's happening here at the 9-11 den. We've been hit by a tornado. Almost every structure that we have has been damaged. And it's not just the 9-11 den that was damaged. All over Northwest Arkansas, there's been a lot of severe damage, damage that we've never seen in this area before. So there's lots of people struggling to get things back to normal. It's difficult to see your hometown demolished and skylines changed forever. These trees that have been knocked down, they're not coming back in my lifetime. So it took about 10 days for us to get power back on. So there wasn't a lot of car repair going on. Mainly what we've been doing is chainsawing, removing trees. But let's get this out of the way first. Luckily, we've had no vehicle damage besides the tractor. also say that Orange Crush has generated interest from some national Porsche experts on which direction the build should go and that's cool I like people taking interest in the car I love the car myself it's interesting it's got a good history it's uh, historically significant since it's an early Carrera but remember the engine is already gone most of the bits that made this car a Carrera are already gone I like an original 74 Carrera as much as anybody, and if my car had been original, I would have kept it that way. That would have been super cool, but it's not. So what I have now is something that's in my wheelhouse, building a hot rod out of a historically significant real Carrera. Now, I think that's cool. Others may not, and that's okay also. So what does that mean? That means we have a blank canvas to do something really cool with a really cool car. I think most people can appreciate that. And I'm excited to get this thing back together. It's coming, but it's got a ways to go. Let's go inside and take a look. All right, here's the current situation with Orange Crush. Sort of just a shell at this point. Some paint work is happening, a little more body work to go, a little more welding. But if you want to see the real story, it's not in here. The real story is out here. It's almost a car. All right, current view from the driver's seat. Correct 74 Carrera Fatty steering wheel. Old school cocoa mats, orange and black. Correct 74 speedometer. I did not have the correct speedometer in the vehicle when I got it. All right, this is a new old stock gauge I found with actual oil temperature and oil pressure readout. Porsche changed this later so that you didn't actually get an accurate temperature reading. You just had sort of a scale. Now these sweet Recaro seats were a Facebook marketplace find out of Missouri. Had a buddy pick them up for me. These are vintage, real deal Recaros with the orange and black. These are sweet and they're gonna go perfect in orange crush. Got some extra material there. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do with that. Might redo the rear seats with it. Might put it on a door panel. I haven't decided. These are H1 headlights. They've got two bulbs in them and two reflectors. This is gonna be an upgrade off the H4. This is a yellow lens, the French headlight. I went to France once when I was just out of high school. I just loved all the yellow lights on the cars and motorcycles. And so I've collected these over the years and put them on my vehicles. 
I'm not sure if that's legal or not. I have been pulled over for it before. But at this point, I don't think it matters. Got these from a buddy, original fog lights. Now these wheels, I'm thinking about painting them orange. I'm not real sure. I haven't decided 100% yet. What do you think? Right now they look great. They're black. They're brand new wheels. They look great. Should I paint them orange? I believe I should, but I'm not 100% convinced yet. These Fuchs 16 by 7s and 16 by 9s are an upgrade. Otto Fuchs out of Germany is again manufacturing the world famous forged Fuchs wheels. And with today's technology, the new wheel is two pounds lighter than those that were being manufactured back in the 1980s. Now this new muffler I had made has absolutely no baffling or packing material whatsoever. So if we look into this muffler body, there's nothing in there. It's just a straight pipe. These narrow bumperettes came on the Euro cars. They also came on the 1974 only 911s. So they're much narrower and they're much lighter. Twice as wide, weighs at least three times as much. Right in the exact location, it couldn't be any worse in terms of weight distribution. Okay, the last thing we have here is this 1986 915 limited slip transmission. This is replacing the original magnesium box which they had in 1974. This is a much stronger transmission and it's a limited slip. You can tell if it's a limited slip by turning one of the half shafts. But I'm going to turn this towards the bell housing, this direction right here. And if you look at the other side, it should turn the same way. If it's an open differential, it'll turn the opposite direction. With this limited slip, there won't be any second gear wheel spin like we saw in Tyler's video. I mean, it's just crazy to have a boosted car like this. The way the lag hits. This is crazy! Absolutely nuts! Two wide of tires, and now we have two of them spinning instead of just one. Big improvement. Now, not everybody sits in their Recaro seats in their garage on the floor with all their parts laid out. I mean, you'd have to be pretty silly to be doing that. Okay, this is our intercooler off the 3 liter turbo. This was a popular upgrade for the early turbos, the 76, 77 turbos that came with no intercooler. So this was an upgrade from those, but to use it you had to ditch the factory tail and put on a turbo tail, a later turbo tail. Now this is a very good intercooler, but the problem with this one was I noticed when I bought it was that there were several areas like this right here that were damaged this right here and regardless of how good the intercooler is if it has damaged fins it's not going to flow air adequately through the intercooler to be very efficient. I had a buddy that worked at a radiator shop for many years and he told me it was easier to use a screwdriver to fix these fins to straighten them than it was one of the radiator combs. Now the last time I drove the 74 Carrera, I noticed it ran great other than it couldn't generate any boost. And I figured it was something simple. And if you look right here, somebody had put a rubber cap on the intercooler here, which kind of got old and decrepit. And if you look, oops, there it is. So it was leaking all of its boost pressure right out into the atmosphere, right through this. Need something more substantial than this vacuum cover. We'll put something else on there. The claim back in the day was these intercoolers could add 40 to 50 horsepower to your stock setup. So we do want to keep the intercooler on there even though it meant a big hassle with the tail on the back of the Carrera. This side of the intercooler is done. Notice the fins are relatively straight now allowing the air to flow through the intercooler. All right, here's the original brochure for this 74 Carrera. 
And these are all cool colors. They used to make the cool colors back in the day, didn't they? Didn't they? Look at that. Yellow, green, orange. Doesn't get any better than that. 2.7 liter. And if we look at the technical data here, let me see, 911 Carrera, 2,687 cc's, 8.5 to 1, 91 octane, 175 horsepower, 167 SAE horsepower at 6,200 RPM. We've taken the power of this original Carrera and doubled it. Now, do I sit here and pretend like I'm driving around in this imaginary car with all these cool parts around me up here by myself? No. Now here's something else that was bugging me about this car when I got it. This Carrera emblem, this is the wrong emblem. This is off like a 996. The emblem should be much smaller than this. So this is this had to go. This will be the perfect car for me to try out my two badges I have stuck on the side of my toolbox. Turbo and Carrera. And it's gonna go right, right there. You know, if Orange Crush had come to me in the original condition with its original engine, I would have left it all alone. I wouldn't have pulled the engine out and put a turbocharged engine in it. At least I don't think I would. But since it didn't, that's why we're going down this path. Now I know plenty of people in the Porsche community, and I've already been told I'm ruining this 1974 real deal Carrera. I could put a 2.7 liter back in this car, but what difference would that make? It's still not a matching numbers vehicle. Why not put something cool in here like this three liter turbo engine and stick these cool parts on there and make something that'd smoke the rest of the Carreras? That's what I'm gonna build. You know, it's true that a lot of the parts that made this car great are now gone. But, when you replace them with parts that are better, you got yourself an upgrade. Of course, I like it. I'm going to have the fastest 74 Carrera on the planet. What's not to like about that? Okay, is it time to call the PCA police? Have I ruined my 74 911 Carrera? I don't think so, Tim. Well, Orange Crush isn't going to assemble itself. I better get up there and get busy. As usual, thank you for watching and see you next time. The dive recovery efforts are made especially easy by this children's mask I'm having to wear in the deep sea.